All right, let's try breaking this paper down a different way. The author's premise behind this is we know a decent chunk of people had three vaccinations and based off of estimates from early 2023, uh, about 75% of people in the U.S. have gotten a COVID infection at least once. So the question is that once you have that COVID infection, is there immune imprinting where it's going to be targeted just to that? Um, and then will the booster of the bivalent va vaccine allow you to have a broadened immune response, a strengthened immune response, or is it just going to start to hyperfocalize maybe on that targeted variant that you had a breakthrough infection with. So basically they broke this down into three groups. So they had one that had two COVID infections and had zero vaccinations. That would be the whites right here. Then they had a group that had three vaccinations and two COVID infections. That would be the yellow group. So this middle one right here. And then they had a group that had three vaccinations, a COVID infection, and then a bivalent vaccine the dark gray group at the top. So looking at our fourth vaccine bivalent vaccine group, the gray, they were ones that had um, a COVID infection that was either in BA2 or in BA5. So BA2 and BA5 is what they got infected with. So that primary series of vaccination, the wild type uh, vaccination provided decent immunity against Delta and BA1. And then we would expect a little bit of immune reactiveness, responsiveness to BA2 and BA5, the infections that these people got. But these infections didn't provide any protection against the next emergent strain, which was the XBB 1.5, or at least next to no, very low levels. So the question again is, if they got a BA2, BA5 infection, is this going to cause your immune system to just be like, all right, whenever I see anything that's COVID related, I'm just gonna target BA2, BA5, and nothing else. And the sort of fear there is because the COVID vaccine, the bivalent vaccine, is targeted to BA4 and BA5. So would an infection and then a vaccination targeted to the same thing the infection was cause this immune imprinting where your immune system just like, attack this one very specific thing? Well, very clearly when we go from the XPBs of pre-vaccination to post-vaccination in the same people, we see that they have an increased immune responsiveness. Um, to the XBBs. So higher is more immune responsiveness, lower is less immune responsiveness. So we're showing that with um, this wide array of vaccinations from the primary series to the bivalence, when you have uh, many different targets now, you're getting a broadened immune responsiveness, which is very positive. Now let's take one step back because I didn't mention this. So how are they testing against all these different variants of COVID? Well, they're taking blood serum, and in our blood, we have antibodies that have been generated to protect against these things that will go into action if they see a target antigen, which would be on COVID. So literally, they're just taking people's blood plasma from blood samples. They're then mixing it with various different variants of COVID, just one at a time, and they're seeing what level of immune responsiveness is generated. So the higher the numbers, the more immune responsiveness, the lower the numbers, the less the immune responsiveness. And what would have been really nice from this study is if they had a uh, vaccinated individual up to four vaccines and three vaccines that had no COVID infections to compare to, that would be something like a control. But this is still good information regardless. Next, we look at the people that had two COVID infections and no vaccinations. Where these people had COVID in the BA1, the BA2, and the BA5 waves. And we're seeing a smattering of BA1, BA2, and BA5 um, responsiveness. So it looks like they're getting some immune protection from the COVID infection, but not a lot. And it's only specific really to what they were infected with. Because if you'll recall, we, in the vaccinated group, we had high levels in the early variants, um, and then um, lower levels over here. And then when they got vaccinated, they had pretty consistently high levels all across, which means they have broadened immune protection. Well, here they only have a focused immune protection, which is where these median numbers are important because the ones that they have the highest uh, protectiveness against, you have the most people in this sample that had these COVID infections. So you have 400, 400. Well, those numbers are about the third, uh, the level of these guys over here that had 
vaccines, showing that you can't rely primarily and only on infection to give you adequate immunity. It's not giving you a broadened immunity against the many different variants out there, especially emergent variants and variants you weren't infected with, but it's also not giving you the same level of protection. You're getting way more protection from vaccination. So there's my second go. Hope that helped.